yeah, it's a bit messy. Hey guys, Cha Chan here. In today's video, we're pinning bugs. Hey, look, there's an alive one, a moth. You're a lucky little dude. Not getting in my insect collection today. So, what do I want in my collection? Some of these are kind of dusty because I usually pick these up at castles. When I go to castles, if you look on the windowsill, these castles, there's always a bunch of bugs. So, uh, we'll have Daddy Long Legs. He's going in the box. So, no, it's fine. Maybe a little bit too wet in that box, but it'll be fine. Then I would like a bumblebee. Which one do I want? We'll have this one. It's nice. Can you even see what I'm doing? Just uh, picking them up carefully. Okay, so these are all the bugs that we're going to mount in this video. Uh, you might be thinking, that is a lot of bugs, but I mean... Yeah, you're right, it's a lot of bugs, but we're going to do it. And it's going to be great. And, uh, I love bugs. Yes. So we're starting with a bumblebee because that was the best condition insect that I had. Most of these insects are in pretty abysmal condition, not gonna lie. They're not in the best of condition. That is because of how I got them. Most of these insects came from windowsills in castles. Literally, windowsills in castles. If you live in the UK, then you might know what I'm talking about when I say those castles that have like museum type rooms, like a refurbished, re-plastered walled room where there's little models of the castle, how it would have been, and little information thingies. Anyway, basically in those kind of windowsills, you will find so many bugs, dead ones, and even some alive ones sometimes, but <laughs> I only take the dead ones. And only if they're in usable condition as well, I don't take anything that's, you know, beyond saving. <laughs> but yes, these bugs have been there for a while, so they're not in the best of condition. They've been exposed to the elements, like the air and the dust, and people walking past, probably? Anyway, so that's why they're not really in the best of condition. Also, they might be caught in a spiderweb, which also does not help them be in very good condition. Anyway, so that's why most of these are disintegrating and we do lose a couple of legs in this video. So yeah. But I will glue them back on because this is just my personal collection so I'm not too worried about things being a little bit wonky here and there. <laughs> a couple of these bugs were also found outside, just dead obviously. I do not kill anything. Just get that out of the way. All are ethically sourced. But yeah, a couple of these bugs did come from the outdoors when I found them dead. Did you know we have rhino beetles in the UK? Because I didn't until I filmed this video. Turns out I picked up a dead rhino beetle. Our rhino beetles are only a centimetre or so long though, compared to the more exotic varieties, which can get up to like three inches or so. So, the more you know. One of these bugs I was really impressed with actually. The one that's green with the very iridescent underside and legs, I did not expect it to be able to be mounted nicely. I thought it was just going to crumble to bits. That's because when I picked it up, it had been stood on. Yeah, I found it on a stone path and it had been squished. <laughs> I was like, mm, I'm not holding high hopes. But it actually turned out really nicely. I managed to spread its wings and open the wing case and it turned out really good. I don't really want to ramble on too much about insects because I have a bit of a story to tell, so I guess I will give you a quick little overview of the process of pinning bugs and how to do it. This is just a rough little thing. I'm probably going to do a full tutorial at some point because I love pinning bugs, it's really fun. But anyway, so, but anyway, so, that is my three filler words right there. Okay. So, to pin a bug, you've got your dead bug and it's dried out, you cannot move its limbs without breaking them, you need to rehydrate it. To do that, you will need a plastic tub, and in that plastic tub you will put a damp paper towel, then you will put your dead bug on that damp paper towel, put the lid back on the box, and leave it overnight. 
The next day, when you take your boat out of the box, you should be able to move its limbs without them breaking off. They might make a slight popping noise, but I assure you that is normal, especially if you are opening up the wing case on the beetle, because they do make a popping noise and it can be really scary, but I promise you, you have not broken it, unless of course it falls off, in which case you definitely have. Anyway, so, once you have rehydrated your bug and you can move all its little limbs without them snapping or breaking off, you can then put a pin through either the thorax or wherever else you need to pin that bug. Different bugs have different pinning places, there's all this pinning etiquette, but you know, just use your common sense, I'm sure you will find a decent place to pin the bug. So once you have your anchoring pin, I guess is what you might call it, your mounting pin, the main pin that's through the bug, you will stick that into a piece of polystyrene and you will use your hands or pins to pull the legs into all the different positions that you want them and use pins to gently secure them in place. But don't put a pin through any other part of the bug. There should only be one pin going through the bug and that is the main pin you did at the start. As for wings, if you're pinning wings, never ever ever put a pin through a wing. If you want wings to be spread, you must use some greaseproof paper or tracing paper or baking paper, whatever you want to call it, and you take a little strip of that and you put it over the wing and you will put pins through the tracing paper but as close to the wing as you can without touching the wing. So that's just a little bit of the wing pinning advice. <laughs> so once you are happy with your bug's position, you will put it into a cardboard box that's, you know, taped closed and you will leave it there for a few days until the bug is dry. And then you can put it in a frame or a box or whatever you want to do with it. So that's the gist of how to pin bugs. I would love to do a full tutorial on it at some point and I probably will. I just need to acquire a big bug. I'd love to do a big rhino beetle again because those are really fun or something like that. We'll see. Anyway, now it's story time, because, uh, oh boy, did I have an eventful Friday. <laughs> so, Friday consisted of two main events. One good thing and one not so good thing. I'm going to go in chronological order, so that means we're starting with the good thing. Yay! <laughs> so, bit of background, for the past couple of years, give or take, I have been considering getting a pet insect. And I finally decided on getting a leaf insect, or three leaf insects specifically. All females, because I want them to reproduce via parthenogenesis, which means they can lay eggs that will hatch without a male being involved, so that's pretty cool and makes really easy breeding. So I ordered these bugs on Tuesday, they were posted out on Thursday, and arrived on Friday morning, because, you know, one day shipping to make sure they arrive alive. <laughs> So I get them out, I put them in the terrarium, terrarium? Vivarium? Vivarium. I put them on their bramble branch and they start eating and they are happy little leaf insects. They are so cute. Literally, they're so, so, so cute. But they do poop a lot. Like, really, they poop so much. <laughs> if you are curious, my leaf insects are called Bulbasaur, Frog, and Danny Phasmid. Do you get it? Because leaf insects are phasmids and Danny Phasmid, like Danny Phantom. Haha, <laughs> please laugh. I've, I've been laughing at my own joke for a week. <laughs> okay, so those are my leaf insects. I love them so much. They are so cute and they are existing. They don't move much. They move when they want to find some new leaf to eat. And that's about it. <laughs> I'd love to do a video dedicated to my leaf insects at some point, I'll just talk more about them, so stay tuned for that, maybe, we will see. That was the good thing that happened on Friday. The rest of the day goes fairly normal, nothing eventful really happens, I buy a grand piano in Animal Crossing. Imagine in real life I just bought a grand piano, haha, <laughs> that would be that would be quite nice actually, I love piano. Anyway, um, but there's no way I could afford that. So. Play Animal Crossing pretty much all day, we get to the evening, and this is where things go downhill. So, guess I should probably fill you guys in if you don't already know, 
but I have a huge cyst bigger than a golf ball. If you are curious, it is 5.5 centimeters long and 4.5 centimeters wide. That's a big boy cyst. <laughs> It just kind of exists and it's not a harmful cyst, we've had it scanned and everything, and, you know, it just kind of exists and it doesn't bother me until it does. And oh boy, did it bother me. <laughs> so I guess I can say this online. So uh, yeah, I went to the bathroom and I guess the sudden change in the amount of stuff in my intestines did not make my cyst very happy because immediately after getting out of the bathroom, my cyst was like, no, I do not like this, I'm going to hurt now. And hurt it did. I stumbled to my bed and I lie there because I cannot stand up, I couldn't stand up straight, I could barely walk. And yeah, I just lie on my back, shaking violently for about 15 minutes until my mum sees me and she's like, why didn't you call for me? And I was like, I don't know actually, I wasn't really thinking. <laughs> I, I literally could have called for anyone to come and see me, you know, to you know, help me not be in as much pain, but uh, I just wasn't really thinking straight. Anyway, so my mum's like, we gotta call 111. If you don't know, 111 is the non-emergency service here in England, so if you just need like urgent advice but not urgent, urgent emergency advice, 111's your number. If you need actual emergency services, then you go to 999. But yeah, we call 111, I answer all of their seemingly irrelevant questions, but I know they have to ask you all these questions, so, you know, what are you gonna do? So I answer all the questions, and then they're like, okay, we will call you back within the next six hours. And my mum was like, if they do not call back within the next ten minutes, we are going straight to A&E, because you are so pale and so waxy, and your lips are blue and you're shaking violently. Fortunately, they did call back within the next 10 minutes. They pretty much tell us to go to A&E anyway, so we go to A&E. But before we go to A&E, I have a very important thing to do. I have to take care of my leaf insects. So leaf insects need to be sprayed with water twice a day, or rather their enclosure does. Don't spray your leaf insects directly, that's not very good for them. So I am shaking violently almost passing out because I haven't eaten, I literally couldn't have eaten if, even if I tried. I was very not well, so I stumble, shaking violently, to my office, room, desk, place, I don't know what to call this room. I open the little enclosure and I'm almost passing out at this point because I'm so hungry, low blood sugar, and like I must spray the enclosure. And I spray them and I baby talk at them, they can't understand me, and they have no concept of love, but I love them and I want to let them know that, so I baby talk at them, even though their tiny little insect brain can't really comprehend it, and they will be scared of me anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I spray the enclosure and then I hobble downstairs, and I get in the car and we go to A&E. We did hit a couple of bumps in the road which made my sister hurt, but... You know, what are you gonna do? So we get to A&E and there's quite a small amount of people there which is good because you know, uh, virus things which you can't say on YouTube without getting YouTubified. So yeah, I see some very interesting uses of masks. There are people wearing them on just their mouth, people wearing them on just their nose, and my personal favourite, the sleeping mask mask. So after about two hours of watching people wear masks incorrectly, we finally get seen and checked over and I'm told, well the pain has subsided by itself because at this point my pain had gone from a 9, which meant I couldn't really do anything, all the way down to a 1.5 because I was able to walk. It still hurt quite a bit but you know, I could walk, I could talk, I could do all of my daily activities. And they were like, okay, you can go home now, but come back if it gets worse, because it might get worse. And it didn't get worse. Here I am two days later. Yesterday I spent the entire day in quite a good amount of pain. Uh, what, a good amount of pain? That doesn't sound right. Quite a considerable amount of pain, but it was bearable. And today I have been okay. There is not any noticeable pain. 
so that's good. Anyway, that was my little uh, A&E trip. I go to A&E more times than I should. I keep having little accidents or problems. Yeah. I've talked about a few of these times in other videos, so... Yeah. Anyway, that was my little uh, exciting Friday. And if you're curious, the leaf insects are doing well. They are eating some leaves and existing. So I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed watching me pin some insects and didn't cringe too much at how badly I pinned some of them all the legs falling off. Hope you enjoyed this video, hope to see you in the next one, and bye! Wasps might be scary when they're flying around, but they're kind of cute when you... Oh, oh. <laughs> um... Maybe we can do a mount that doesn't require legs to be visible. Oh my god, not again. <laughs> Is this one... This fly is not suitable for, um... God. Okay, so these are my leaf insects. Over here we have Bulbasaur hiding, and then we have Danny Phasmid over here who is eating a leaf, and then on the ceiling we have Frog. Dun 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 d